Oh, you look nice today. Look at you with your court. jacket. Look at you. Had to go to stupid court today. Can't speeding ticket. Oh, how'd that go? Not bad. All one. We'll be right back. Welcome to Wake Up. <laughs> when we wake up, I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. <laughs> I fought the law and the law. You lost won. the, the beatable the ticket? Law, the law won. So it was beatable, but you didn't beat it. I don't think it was beatable, but okay. it was it was just a, a, a good waste of my day. Good morning. Maybe you just We're needed gonna... to declare a fast. That's what, you know, I, I needed <laughs> some more days. That stronghold. There was no breakthrough. The <laughs> cop was unwavering. <laughs> There's no breakthrough. Let my people go. So we're going to rally around the courthouse and we're going to yeah, bring your trumpet. We're going to march. Seven. We did seven. Didn't come down. No. No. <laughs> Maybe needs eight. I don't know. I got to reread the scriptures. Hey, we got a scripture for your day and we're glad you, you joined us and we're talking on fasting this week. Yeah, we are. And, and uh, you have a scripture. Uh, Jesus, his disciples were trying to cast a, a demon out of a boy. And, right. uh, and it just wasn't. The, the dad came. I was like, hey, your disciples, they... Uh, <laughs> They're... They're not like, that good. They keep trying to cast a demon out of my son. He keeps throwing himself in the fire. And it's not like your your disciples can't do it. And Jesus is like, okay. And he he go, he goes into the you know what we always uh, uh, talk about because of your unbelief. Because they're like, well, why did it work for us? He says, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it'll move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But then in verse twenty one, he says, however. Somebody say, however, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And I, I read that and I was like, OK, so Jesus is saying to you and I, there's certain obstacles in life yeah. that need prayer and fasting to break. Right. Yeah. He, a lot of people have thought that that meant that this demon comes out through prayer and fasting. But he wasn't talking about that. He said, <laughs> it's your unbelief. And then he says, yep. what? Well, then he says, what? Look. It's not about having more faith. Because he's like, if you've got faith Just the size of the faith. Life, it's not about your faith. Right. It, so get this. It wasn't about their faith. It was about their unbelief. Unbelief wow. is different than faith. So you can have faith and unbelief operating in the same atmosphere. Right. If you just rid the unbelief, that little bit of faith, boom. Right. Yeah, you could have this much unbelief and this much faith. And all you got to do is get rid of this. Get rid of the unbelief. And now I can move a mountain. Yeah. It's so, it's so powerful. And so, but he says, hey, prayer and fasting is a great way to get rid of the unbelief. And we said this a couple of days ago that prayer and fasting isn't changing God. Yeah. All it does is it changes you and I. And oftentimes we have a smidgen or we have a whole lot of unbelief because of things in our past and, and prayers that didn't seem to, to go our way and, and things that happened as a kid. And we have all of this unbelief oftentimes that can get built up in us. Yeah. And he's saying, all right, if you want to get rid of the unbelief, let's do some prayer and some fasting. Yeah, let's try and, and uproot these things. Uh, because why? Because, again, we're, we're placing the flesh where the flesh belongs. See, unbelief wants to live in your flesh. It wants to live in your, in, in it doesn't live in the Holy Spirit. Unbelief doesn't live doesn't, no. in the Spirit of God. Unbelief does not live in Christ in you. Right. Right. It's the flesh that's been crucified with Christ where doubts and unbeliefs and things that doubt God live. And so when we fast, we're saying to our flesh, I'm in charge of you. I'm running, I'm running the show. Daddy's in charge. Yeah. Your world is being created by one of two forces. It's either your faith or it's your fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is just the opposite of faith. It's your unbelief. And those are the two forces that, that are, are basically creating your day. As I walk forth, do I believe that today is going to be a great day? Do I believe that God's going to prosper what my hands go to? Do I believe that this is the day God made? Is yeah. that my belief? If that's my faith, then I seem to create that. At the end right. of every one of my days, I've had a great day. Yeah. Now, I may have some obstacles and things to overcome through, through Christ Jesus, but even those make me happy. James said that. It's a kind of all joy. So I'm happy with all of those things. Or it's like, well, it's going to be another bad day. Yeah. Hey, me and my spouse is, is just—we're just going to fight, and, and the kids aren't going to do anything I ask, and my job is horrible. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, your fear created everything that you believed. Yeah. And what we're saying is, prayer and fasting gets you to the place where I, my flesh is no longer because flesh is always going to go to fear. Right. Spirit's always going to go to faith. I put my flesh in control. And I build up that muscle of self-control and say, no, you don't run my day. You don't run my attitude. You don't run my thoughts. You run nothing. You're, not a, you're in charge of absolutely nothing of my day. Right. My spirit's running my day. 
It's it's so true, and uh, I think when we recognize that the spirit has authority over the fl- the flesh, the spiritual things take dominion. Everything that was that is was created by the word, by spiritual right. and eternal things, by the word of God, and so the physical things take a back seat or take a lower position from the eternal things, the things that we pray for, the things that we believe God for. And our unbelief, a lot of times there's things in people's lives where, you know, they're able to receive God's wealth easily. I've met people who have no problem at all starting businesses. They they uh, begin to flourish right away. Money's just coming. Right. And, and there's no issue at all. But then when it comes to this other promise of God... Uh, they struggle. Where, yeah, maybe their marriage or maybe... Uh, uh, with their kids, yeah. or maybe with their health, or there's some other joy, or there's some other thing that, that Satan keeps. It's almost like the devil's gotten in there and, uh, and taken possession of a piece of their life, and they keep saying, get out, I know what God's promise is, but it's not moving. It keeps right. taking that possession. And you're like that disciple that keeps saying, get out. And Jesus in you is saying, listen, that stronghold may need a little more work. Right. Why don't we declare fast? and take authority and see that thing broken. And mom and dad did that all growing up. But it's, you know, dad would go, okay, I'm dealing with this issue. He's like, yeah. all right, I'm gonna do a little fast. He hit a little three day fast. Boom. And you would see, boom, all of a sudden that issue is something that he no longer take, which is great for me and you, because what we found out is whatever your parents take, the kids don't have to take. Yeah. So when the parents take the promised land, the kids just walk right into it. Yeah. And so many of the things that maybe I even dealt with as a kid, all of a sudden mom, and, mom or dad would break it, and all of a sudden I no longer dealt with it. Yeah. And so you're not doing this just for you, but you're doing this for generations. You might be doing it for your children, yeah. your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And, and realizing that, that what's happening, the change that the greatest change that's happening and being impacted in your life through fasting is the change that takes place inside of you. Yeah, that's good. We're not fasting so that our spouse changes. We're fasting so that we change, yes. so that we grow, right? We're not fasting so that our boss changes. We're fasting so that we change, so that we grow. The, the great it. growth is what's happening on the inside of you because out of the abundance of a, a man's heart, the mouth begins to declare the right things of God. Out of the abundance of the heart, of what's in the heart comes the wellspring of life. It's the things inside of us that change through our fasting right. that are going to impact everything around you. Change the in, change the out. Hey, we want to pray over your day. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you just bless them, Lord. Help them to go forth and begin to change the inside, Lord. Change what's in them so that they can experience the great life that you want on the outside of them. Lord, show them areas in their lives where the enemy has gotten a foothold. And that little foothold is an area that they continue to struggle with, Lord. And then you guide them and direct them how to get the enemy out. If it's through prayer and fasting, Lord, then that's what they begin to do. And they begin to break off the enemy's strongholds in their life and the things that are limiting their life from being all that you desire to be. Bless their day. Prosper their day. Give them just an incredible, safe journey of a weekend. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope you enjoyed today. Give us a thumbs up. Share it if you like. Don't forget to be in God's house this weekend. You oh, need yeah. the energy. You need to be charged up. You yeah. got enough things pulling you down. You got to be in a place once a week yeah. that is building you and up. You're going to get 5.2 gigawatts of Jesus it's this gonna weekend. It's going to be right? a how, big how many gigawatts was it? Do you remember? 5.2? 1.21 gigawatts. gigawatts. We're doing back to the blessed. <laughs> Getting you back. To the place where you're blessed. That's right. Back to the, yeah. Back to the blessing. It's like back to the future. But back to the blessing. Yeah, back to the blessing. Back to eating. We'll see you this weekend. It's going to be great. Be blessed. Be blessed.